and then we can go from there. From verse 23, there are different kinds of prayers. There is petition, there is supplication, and intercession. When it comes to praying for the nation and changing things, petition cannot do it. Actually, the, those three types of prayers are given to us to accomplish different things. If I want to pray for a sick person now, that's the type I will use. If I want to ask God for maybe for certain needs in my life, that's the type I will use. But when I, I was, in those days when my, the rest of the people in my family were not born again, and I was the only one, I was ju not just the only one in my own immediate family, I was the only one in the extended family. And I was praying to see, to bring about family salvation. Petition cannot do it, could not do it. And even to now, some of you, you just pray those soft prayers for your family. That's, you, you're not going to, you need to move to supplication and intercession. When it comes to praying for the country, it's like that. When you come to an environment where people are used to the anointing and are used to um, the miraculous, sometimes you find people who don't have stamina in intercession. They, 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 they like the shortcut, how to cut things short, and they don't, and God can't use them. God can't use them. God can use them. They don't know how to weep. They don't know how to repent. They don't know how to persist. They don't know how to travel. They don't know how to groan in the spirit. They don't know how to humble. They say they like all this word of faith thing. God can use you. God lost America during the word of faith movement. I want to say it again. Christianity began to lose America during the word of faith movement. Because they learned only one aspect of the stuff. Because the, the, the prayer of petition is sharp, sharp. It's like frying egg. It's like drive through restaurants. Fast food. You just, yeah, they do the thing, give you, it's done. You just do it, it's done. That is not, you will not. Actually, more than 70%, maybe 80% of what God wants to accomplish on earth cannot be accomplished by that. Revivals are not created by that. And that's the only thing many of you know. So when we talk about like national issues, you just come do all those and stop. Some even wonder why we call things like fasting. Serious things that God has in his mind, they can use you because your theology is faulty and your practice is wrong. The Nigerian church has almost become important. If we're praying church, then our prayer should save our nation. Prayer can change history. What is wrong? There are three books I gave you. I want to go back to them and refer to them. There are prints. The purpose of this book is fasting by the prayer. You see how prevailing prayer combined with past fasting can change history. Go back and look at those particular chapters like issue of Esther and the nation of Israel. Uh, you see about Nineveh and some of those other examples that are given here. Then the other book I'm recommending is the atomic power of God. Yeah. Okay. This one, we're going to read a little. Pastor Ben, get a copy so you can read for us. And the man that is on project to project the parts, testimonies from... This is how God moved in America, moved in Europe, moved in the world. And look at how it was created.
This is chapter 4. Great testimonies from fasting and prayer. And project it, project it. Pick that portion of the book and project it. Okay, you read for us and everybody listen so that you will see. This type of prayer, please, can you put up um, James chapter 5? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man Five sixteen, confess your faults one to another pray one for another that you may be healed look at that part the effectual that supplication and that can also apply to intercession when you have to pray for others if we want to see revival if we want to see our families saved, if we want to see our nations change it's not this have a pancake type of prayer it won't do it that one has its limits it's like anointing. There are different levels of anointing and they have their own functions. Confess your fault one to another. Your sleeps, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. Then pray also one for another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. Then, this is the part I'm going, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in his walking this is supplication and there are some things you need there are certain things in your life that will come this sharp sharp prayer will not do it so don't bring that into this we're in the week week of praying for the nation don't bring that in that is this your word of faith kind of thing we need to last yesterday i saw a gentleman who understood that and he was leading what was his name pastor alex yeah yes i saw that i almost said let him lead the whole thing throughout this week where are you sir yes Study more in that direction. That thing you were doing yesterday. Whether it's the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit also comes on people and prays through us. But you need to study more. Because it's what he's doing that we're supposed to be doing. The Holy Spirit is an intercessor. Jesus is an intercessor. The church too are called into the ministry of intercession. Every believer is supposed to be an intercessor. Jesus is no more preaching now. He's no more pastor. He's no more here. But what he is using to still keep us in place, save the Bible says he's able to save to the utmost they that come to God through him. When people answer altar call, Jesus enters the ministry for he ever lived to make intercession for them. That's how he does it now. And when people give their life to Christ, if you want them to be saved to the utmost, to the end. No falling away. That is what you do for them. You see how we lead people to Christ these days. Ah, say after me. All those sharp, sharp. That's petition. You know, prayer of faith. Sha, sha. What it takes to make that man become like Jesus is beyond that. Wherefore, look at it. 725. Hebrews 725. He is able to save to the utmost until you end up in heaven. You have made it in the rapture. What he's doing for you is intercession. He's no more preaching. He has delegated those ones to us. But he's doing a ministry that is even higher than preaching. A few intercessors can reorganize the whole Nigerian election, score all the major points that God wants. move all the things batter all the forces that have beset this nation if you 
that man that if God finds, he can't lose a family, he can't lose a soul, and he can't lose a nation, is an intercessor. Not even the preacher. The preacher, yeah, comes second after this. Without that man, souls will be lost. The work of God can be hindered. Nations can be lost. Families can be lost. Go to Isaiah. He that loved the Lord, give him no rest. Still. He makes Zion a praise in the earth. So, the word I want to underline or emphasize is still. There's something called push. What women do in the maternity world. You don't just come there, drink one tea, shout hallelujah, baby is out. No. And there's nothing like I, I, I just push small and the midwife told me to push. I tried and then I stopped. No. It is until the baby is out. They call it P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. P-U-H-S. Pray until something if the breakthrough is not achieved, the intercessory work does not stop. Actually, there is a man called Liz House. He wrote, published a book, The Intercessor by Liz Howe. All of you want to be intercessors, you get that book. I, I, I brought it and made it available here for a period of time. You know, I don't know whether we still have copies of it. Now, he said there is a difference between an intercessor and a person who prays. An intercessor takes up a, a burden for a particular project. And we stay on that till the goal is achieved. That's the difference. So, some people call themselves intercessors that are not. An intercessor, if you take up the Nigerian project, you don't stop till you bet a new nation. He said, a, a, a Christian that just prays, just prays about something like you, a man that dashes you money. You are a beggar on the road and he passes and drops some money and goes. No, no. There is a difference between that and a parent. A parent takes responsibility for a child till the child grows and matures and becomes an adult. That's how intercession works. Until it's different from petition, which you just do and, and until I have set watchmen over your walls, O Jerusalem. These are intercessors. We shall never hold their peace. Hey, you see what I'm talking about? This God is looking. When you say, I sought for a man, this is what he's looking for. I sought for a man that will stand in the gap and make up the hedge. These people shall never hold their peace. They will stop day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep no silence until keep no silence, give him no rest till everyone say till that's the word for tonight. You get it, then you can join the army of it because there are few on the earth, and that's why the kingdom of God is losing battles. Who take responsibility for this child? So, for example, now there is this bad boy in your street. You take, put him in your list. When you read that book, Liz Howard, anybody they put in the list, you must get saved. It's no, it's no more optional because on the altar they put you there. Why you are probably an armed robber? They put you there until by the time they persist, persist. A couple of months passes, you see the man, some of them, and usually when they get saved, they are preachers. They become completely transformed. They take it after a while. When he has learned to do it for souls, he will have certain people, very notorious, sometimes take certain families. He will pray, 
pray all of them into the kingdom. Try for your family. What is you have family people that are not saved and all that? This is what is missing. You have to carry them in your womb like a pregnant woman. That's what is called carrying a burden. That's what God wants to put in your heart for your nation. And the Lord tells me, he said, when he gets to when I need human beings to partner with me, I find it's very scarce. Yet, I have many children that are in their millions. Good evening. I have many children in their millions. But when it comes to divine partnership, God will be looking for people. You see it when you want to raise money. When there is serious need in the kingdom. When it's time to receive, everybody rushes up. It's time for betting. It's when the price is paid that we can get to that season where we can reap it. Let me tell you, every major season you see in Dominion City, there is a tremendous period preceding it of intense pain, intense intercession, intense consecration, intense fasting, intense self-denial. After that, you stop when you feel a release in your spirit. It's a burden. Like when a baby finally is out, the mother... There are temporary release, but the baby is not out. It's to prevent pregnancy from killing the woman. So, labor will do, do like this, do like this. It will hit, 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 it. It will slow down. So that the woman will not... God allows us that. But the body does not live till the baby is out of the womb. In the spiritual realm, when a body, you have a body, and you pray, and you pray, it doesn't matter whether it takes days, it takes weeks, or it takes months, and there are some cases that take years, but the day, the breakthrough of course, the easy release in the spirit, that body is replaced with joy, with the spirit of joy, with a liberty in the spirit, with, with the body lifts, at that moment, that thing you are praying about has been born. Watch out. After a while, it will begin to show up on the earth. That's how revivals are better. That's how the purposes of God are better from heaven to earth. That's how you can plant heavens on the earth. Nigeria is moving again in the direction of America. The church in America got to that point where they became lazy women that can't have children. We know we are the bride of Christ. If God has, Jesus has anything on his heart, we are the ones he impregnate and we bet it for him. We are the ones that carry his babies and bet. Anytime you see a successful move of God, a successful accomplishment of God on the earth, there are people who wept, who cried, who traveled, who in prayer and finally that thing came. The ones we like to honor and recognize are the ones on the front line, the pulpit. No. Wait till we get to heaven. It is those men laboring behind the scene. Some of them could also be preachers. There is a depth of intercession that binds even the forces of heaven. Is that not what one man did in Babylon, in Persia, and seized the prince of Persia? And ended the paving a way for the rebirth of the nation of Israel. And the rebuilding of the same temple that they destroyed. A man by the name of Daniel. Sometimes when he goes, he will say, he will do it 21 days. Pasha fast. Why he? Go and read some of those his prayers. Those are the kind of prayers you should be praying now. That will start with repentance. There is a lot of evil that is going on in this country. And not just the repentance. Oh God forgive Nigerians. No. Identification. We must be put ourselves in it. The way the church too were involved. Prayerlessness itself is a sin. We have to put ourselves. And cry to God for his mercy and for his help. Oh, this is our yeah, 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 yeah. We don't work. It will not work. It has not worked for years and it will not work. I've said watchmen over your wall, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Either make much. If not, we should just do the prayer yesterday and go. Why, why, why are we back here? 
Why are we going to be back here tomorrow? Why are we going to be here throughout this week? Why are we fasting the whole week? This time is maternity season. Whosoever these two people that will finally emerge by the end of this week is one of them. This time around, we're going to have Caleb and Joshua. So that whichever one we vote, it will be a good leader. We're going to have John, Peter and John. Because before, they will give us Judas and Lucifer. And then we'll be looking at the two. Which, which one? When they give you two evil, you look for, we'll be looking at which one is the better evil. Absalom and Adonijah. We are talking about the report of corruption. The kind of things that are coming out. The other day, it is uh, Accountant General. They are still on that thing, 80 billion. And we said, if your salary, our professors in Nigeria don't even end up to 1 million, many of them. There are one or two whose salary reaches up to a million a month, many are not. Or is it which, which, look at education, look at the schools. We are here for intercession, and people should do it with burden. We are here to raise a cry to God. We are here to bet a new nation. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep no silence. Give him no rest till he establish, till he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So, whether it is for dominion city you are praying for, that's what it takes. Because you see, when you, like now, you guys are enjoying what we betted. And the future is dependent on nothing can go wrong where God has men that understand this ministry. Nothing. God stops losing battle where he finds a handful of intercessors. You know, Jesus started, he said, pray thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. It takes prayer to make sure that the will of God is done. If we don't, the will of the enemy will prevail again. He has prevailed many times in this country. The will of God is rarely done on the earth because the person running the earth, the God of this world, is Satan. So it is the prayers of God's people that paves the way. That's why a lot of times people are asking God, why? Where are you? Why all this is going on? It's not God that is killing people. He That's against his will. Satan is the one doing it. Adam was the one that created a problem and gave him government of this world. Adam was giving the government dominion. He sold it away to the enemy and he has been running the system, creating problems. So God Almighty had to respect the fact that the person he bought a car for carried the car and dashed a thief. Even though the thief took it from him, but he obtained it legally. He did it by deception, but it was Adam that signed the document. So you say, please go and arrest the devil. When they get there, you say, look at it. He signed. He's the one that gave me this thing. So that's why they have to allow him till Adam's lease runs out. Adam was given that lease. It's supposed to be a, a contract for one week, a 7,000 years contract. Then it will be renewed. So 6,000 years. And then we're going to have... And a second Adam has come now to redeem, to pay the debt, to redeem the earth, to redeem all of the things that was lost by that old transaction. That transaction he did is the basis for us to reclaim our nation, to reclaim our families, to reclaim souls to reclaim people in the place of intercession because if you have gone to refund the money then you have right to say return my property 
That's why what redemption means. Redemption is pay a ransom. A ransom is a price. The price of a particular thing to bring it out from market, from sell. In the days of slavery, slave masters keep selling because they want to recover their money. And they want to even make profit. So if the slave wants freedom, he has to work hard enough, earn enough money to pay the master the ransom. That's what it's called. So you can be, if you purchase your freedom. He bought you from somebody else. So you have to pay him back his money to be free. And now you don't have the money to pay. Somebody else who cares about you and wants to set you free can't just come and collect you. He has to pay the owner of the slave the ransom, the price of this young man, the full price, then he can set him free. That's what the Savior did for us. And the price for man's redemption is death. Because the wages of sin is death. And that's the debt we are owing. And so anybody willing to purchase us has to be willing to die for us. If you commit a certain crime, the penalty has been spelled out by the law that the consequence is death by fire. And you say, I want, I want this guy free. Then, are you ready to take his place? That's what Jesus did. It's called substitution. Substitution. Are you ready? You want them free? Okay. The court of justice said, are you willing to lay down, take their place? He said, yes. And they took him and put him in my place. So he now died the death I should have died. Took the punishment that I deserve in order to cancel the debt that I'm owing and purchase for me redemption. So he didn't just do that for humanity. He did it for the planet Earth. The debt required to redeem Nigeria has been paid. So there is something legal you need to bring with you when you approach the altar of God in intercession. The debt required to get this country out of captivity, out of bondage, has been paid. The debt required to redeem the souls of men here has been paid. But just like healing, the price for your healing has been paid when he took 39 strokes. But the enemy does not just let you go because somebody has paid it. No, no, no. The person we're dealing with does not play. Um, you know, there are laws of war, war convention. There are certain rules. Don't bomb civilians. Don't bomb uh, women and children. Just fight with your fellow. When you're dealing with terrorists, when you're dealing with criminal organizations, they don't care. Instead, they see civilians and use them as shields. So that if you want to come and bomb them, they won't die alone. That's what Satan is doing. Satan is not the type that fights fair. He doesn't follow the rules. So, whatever it is that has been accomplished must be enforced. It's enforcement. I love what Liz Howard said. He said, to create a real intercessor, you need ingredients. Number one, you need a burden. A burden. They have to know how bad the situation is. And the book of Joel dedicated one chapter to creating a burden. Burden for revival. Burden for restoration. Then number two, you need identification. If you're praying for a nation or praying for the church and you disconnect yourself, your prayer will not work. Intercession does not work without identification. Oh. How do you explain identification? Identification is stepping to the person's shoe. Feel what they feel. Identification is put yourself inside the situation. Don't just put yourself out and talk to them from there. God forgive them. No. That's not what Jesus did for us. Put up Isaiah 53. He is despised, rejected of men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs. 
who do things trouble you? He carried the intercessor, the intercessor through compassion, through love, must identify with the person you're praying for. If he's a sick man, take it as if he's you. Then the, the, the intensity with which you will fight this thing if he's you. You bring it to bear in this situation. If he's a poor man, take it. Let's, let's assume we want to pray for the lecturers and the university. Put yourself in the position of a parent whose son is at home. They can't graduate. They want to do a four-year course. They are now six years and yet without. Put yourself in the position of a lecturer that inflation has come, things has gone up, yet it is what he was earning 12 years ago that they are still giving him. Are you getting the idea? You have to put yourself in this situation where you will feel the pain. It is that thing that you bring before God, it cracks the situation. If you just do it with nonchalant, it doesn't bother you. Forget about it. It doesn't work. But if you want to intercede to stop this violence that is going on, put yourself in the shoe of one of those people in the train. And that tinas I'm talking that they are still in the kidnappers then. Put yourself in the shoe of that young girl that is kidnapped. Is being raped every day. At that moment, this burden we're looking for comes. And what the scripture means by effectual fervent, heartfelt. So you want to get people's heart to be into, that is how it comes. He has borne our grief, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But look at verse 5. He was wounded for our transgression. The, the man identified to the point of even taking our sufferings on him. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. With his stripes, we were healed. Add verse 6. All we like sheep. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord has laid the iniquity of us all on him. That's an intercessor. God will reward him because he poured out his soul and he makes intercession for. But all this thing you are reading is identification. A man that is righteous, he lives in a planet where there is peace, coming to identify with people that are sinners and others. And that's how he brought salvation to us. And that's what an intercessor, an intercessor now is the mediator that God has now on earth. After Jesus has risen from the dead. Because even before the coming of God, we had intercessors like Abraham, like Moses. Whenever God finds one, he can save that situation. Look at his reward. Therefore, I will divide him a portion, verse 12, with the great. So all this God has highly exalted him, giving him a name. That's what he was prophesied. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with transgressors. And he bare the sins of many. And did what? Made intercessions for the transgressors. That's exactly what God is looking for now. At least your own. He's not tell, telling you pour your soul unto death. It's to pour it out in prayer. In agony, in, in travail before God for your country. And this is how we can pray out a major move of God in this city, in this nation, and around the world. That's how it is done. And if you have family members that are not saved, you have uh, some of them that are struggling, things are not good. This is how. It's not all that petition prayer only takes care of about 25% of human problems. The prayer of faith. There is now a backlog that requires the ministry of supplication and intercession to move. A good example of a New Testament example of that. I've shown you Jesus and um, I can show you Old Testament examples. There are many. Daniel, Nehemiah, so many of them, you know. But a New Testament very good example of that is Luke chapter 18 and I will close. Yeah.
he spoke a parable unto them to this end look at the purpose of the parable that men ought always to pray and not do what jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not turn coward faint lose heart or give up so people who pray should not lose heart or give up so that type of prayer because if a woman does that in the middle of bed two people will die she will die the baby will die there are even some they push they get to a point there are certain situations midwives constantly tell me this the pregnant woman now wants to sleep you have you can't let her you wake her up if she sleeps she goes to death they are getting tired they want to sleep no you have to wake them up the bible says, you shall be saved you and your household so he told this prayer this story yes verse 2 there was once a judge in a city which fear not God. This man doesn't fear God. He doesn't have any respect for anybody. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city that came to him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. So probably some people are taking family land. Husband is there. He's dead. Some people are harassing them. He said, Okay, king, help me. Save me from these people. He doesn't want to. Doesn't care. Verse 4. And he will not for a while but afterward he said within himself do I fear not God do I don't have any respect for any man verse 5 yet because this widow troubled me I will avenge her lest by her continual coming everyone say continual coming she will wear me out that's what intercession is this is Jesus the son of God telling you how to get things continue that that's why he called it push. Pray until something happens. God will not have rest. So. He, he just read it. He that make mention of God. Give him no rest. And now Jesus. And if anybody should know how prayer works. This is the man that should tell you. He has been in heaven. He's come here. He's explaining to you. The judge said, even though, but this woman will not give up. Less by her continual come, she will wear me out. Because this widow troubles. Somebody in need, are you going to put the person in prison? You can't. So what are you going to do? Solve the problem. That's why you are king. So, take note of this. This is what persistence in prayer. And that's the summary of what I'm trying to get across to you tonight. Till. Give him no rest. Till. My experience, some take weeks, some days, some months, some years. But it in all cases they will all cave in you don't have any issue that can withstand the force of intercession you don't supplication and intercession you don't till you make Zion a praise so because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her less by her continual coming. She wears me out. Then Jesus summarizes, shall not God avenge his own elect, his own children, which cry day and night. Did you see the same thing? Unto him, even though he bears long with us. Sometimes it takes some time. Sometimes it takes some time. Shall he not avenge them? He answers the the question for us the next verse 8 I tell you he will avenge them what spin get it into your head it's not going to take too long but sometimes in the physical realm it takes some time 
Yes. There are just some things that take time. If an elephant get pregnant, it's going to take two years for that baby to come out. A human being takes nine months. So, because you know how to pray, you want to get pregnant today, deliver it tomorrow, it doesn't work like that. God created times and seasons. Some things take time, believe me. Some things take time. Some things take time. God can answer prayer in heaven. On earth is human beings delaying it. The last time Daniel was told, the first day you started, your prayer was what? But what happened? The prince of the kingdom of Persia withheld me for 21 days. That is principality delayed the working out of the prayer that who has to be called and then not only that Gabriel was delayed God had to send the archangel Michael to go on a rescue he gives seed to sowers and gives bread to eaters but you have to persist you have to stay you have to stay and finally it will be delivered. I think we have made the point for tonight. Eh?